Okay, so I know my forward lock bolt is going to be right here. So now I'm going to cut the slot for the ramrod and drill the ramrod hole so that the ramrod passes above it. Now right here is where I'm going to put my rear pin, barrel pin. It'll be in this web here. I've come down a quarter inch here. And out here, I've actually come down 5 sixteenths, a little over, maybe almost 3 eighths. Because I'm going to angle it because of the, the bottom of the barrel is angled for the tapered barrel. So the ramrod is going to end up being pretty much parallel to this top edge. So it'll be lower here, a little higher here, just pass under this barrel lug, and it'll angle up, get over this forward lock bolt. So what I'm going to do now, I figure this is going to be the extension of the wide part of the stock because I want this pin to go through a wider part. The one out pin out here will be a real narrow part. But this pin kind of pins the barrel to the stock. This one out here just pin the stock to the barrel because this stock will be real thin and small. And then this will from the bottom of the ramrod hole. This will be my ramrod hole here. But out here it'll be a groove, so I'm going to cut this section of stock off down to the lower part of the ramrod, which will be the ramrod. And then I'm going to cut a 3 8 deep groove down to this line here. Then with wood blocks clamped to the top of here, that'll be a guide for the drill. The drill's a 3 8 hole. Another issue I have here is that this inlet for this mainspring goes down almost halfway through. Goes down seven eighths. So I'm gonna to have to slightly angle this ramrod groove. I'm gonna angle it an eighth inch down here and I move it over a sixteenth up here which won't be that noticeable. So it'll be off to the side a little and it'll angle to pass the, pass the mainspring so that the ramrod hole doesn't hit the mainspring inlet. These are all things that have to be figured out. I'm going to silver solder my uh, barrel mounting lugs and my front side onto the barrel. And this was a really good tip that I got from another gun builder making these little clips out of uh, MIG wire. It's wire welding wire. And what they do is they hold the lugs in place. them lined up in the position where I want them and what I do is tin the areas that's going to solder to the barrel put flux and then a layer of solder on them and I put flux on the barrel where these are going to go put them on with these clips and then warm up the barrel until the solder melts and I've got sweat soldered on with silver bearing solder, barrel lugs, and front sight. I've silver soldered on the barrel lugs and the front sight. I just got to clean up the excess solder. I'm going to inlet these to the bottom of the barrel groove because there's on this web there's not much wood beneath these. I found if I do the ramrod channel first. When I'm inletting for these, sometimes it breaks through. This one don't matter, but this one out here shows. I just don't like it to, to look in the ramrod groove and see a barrel <laughs> mounting lug. So I'll inlet these first. And I've been reshaping the butt plate. More of the diamond pattern. And very flat. I annealed this, I heated it up just so that we could barely see red in a dark room and pounded it out flat and I've been filing it, reshaping it so it's more like a 15-1600s gun rather than a 1700s Kentucky rifle. So now I'm going to inlet those. Just going to use the black stuff and mark them and cut away the black. Till it settles back down in its groove. So 
So I've cut this, cut the stock away here down to the level of the bottom of my ramrod. It's the line for the top, and I extend the lines back, 3 8 ramrod, pass overneath, over the top of that front lock screw. So that takes care of the up and down. And sideways, I've come in 7 8, which is the depth of my mainspring cutout. And I came over an eighth, or an eighth of an inch of wood there, and then measured for my three eighths ramrod here, and then up here I, I centered it. At, I centered it on the front of the barrel and uh, got my three eighths wide there. So this this part here will be cut out down to three eighths deep to guide the drill to drill this hole back here. Now I have a ramrod. Now I'm going to take this area down here. So I've got just a quarter inch of wood, which will be one sixteenth over the final dimension of three sixteenths, which should be halfway up the ramrod. Putting this butt plate. You know, I'll do more reshaping when I get it on, mounted on the stock as I'm reshaping the stock, but I'm lining up this with a sixteenth below the edge here. And I'm marked here where I've got to cut away so that this will fit on there and I'll, I'm going to be leaving. I'll cut this out and leave a little wood on here and then I'll take this down with the black stuff till it fits there and then I'll use that when I'm shaping the rest of the stock. I'm going to have a central ridge on this line here. But then it's going to go down narrow up here. So I'm going to start taking the stock down here and then I'll start shaping it to this lock. But I can take after I get, I wanted to leave wood on the forestock to clamp it with while I'm uh, cutting that ramrod groove and also I can clamp it back here just before I take these panels down I'll, I'll swoop the stock down so that they stand above the rest of the stock
So now what I've done, I've marked where I wanted my screws to go. I'm going to use two number 10 inch and a half iron screws. So I center drilled it and then drilled into the wood with a 1 8 inch drill and I'll enlarge the holes in the plate here so I can get my taper drill and drill it for these screws and I'll countersink the heads. The buck plate's now drilled and countersink for the number 10 one and a half inch long flathead screws. I'm using the old head screws but for just for now I'm just fastening it on with the hardware store number 10 one and a half inch screws and uh, I'm just shaping the stock down to it. So I've got this 1 16th below the comb where I want. I don't want to alter this because that has to do with the siding. The bottom is kind of let it run wild. So I'll be bringing this down. I'll blend the line in from the bottom of the stock up here to the, where this butt plate ends and I'm going to incorporate this toe plate that'll be bent to conform to the stock and then inlet its thickness in, into the wood to reinforce this the stock get pretty these curved stocks I get some run out grain here so yeah it's just be a reinforcing piece that we used a lot on the old days because after you fired your first shot you basically had a club a bigger club than a pistol and you didn't want it breaking on you. <laughs> Just dampening it a little bit around the edges. Swell up any low spots. Not too much, just enough to dampen it. Cause the fibers to swell, make it fit a little better. And put in some reference lines for stock shaping. Of course this corner could go right away. I just laid my flexible rule along here to come out on that point and drew a line. And I, I don't want to go taking this stock down. I want to leave this part high for now. So I want to take the stock away from here back to the butt plate down an eighth of an inch. Some reference lines there. And also on the front, I'll be taking this down to a quarter inch to the barrel, probably a little more. Right now I'm going to take it down just over an eighth width ways to leave these areas standing high and then I'll work them down on the sanding board. First I'll take this one down so that I've got just the right amount of plate sticking above the surface. Just that chamfered part. Then I'll take this side down to match it. And I'll have my widths through the lock area and everything else will form to that. This up here will round off and blend up into this. I'm not sure here if I'll just use an angle and come up to that or if I'll take it right out to a panel like a flint lock. That will tell me as it gets there. And then this back here, I'm taking it, I gotta have a central ridge I'm down right here. And everything up here will kind of angle down to form along that ridge. Down here, this will form up along that ridge. And when you're holding the gun, the ridge will go right through the palm of your hand right there. But that'll be get shaped while it's while I'm forming this. That will get shaped by feel. You just look at it and you feel it, and if it looks right and it feels right. It's probably right. Or it's going to work for this gun. So that's first thing I got to do. I got get my finished surfaces here, and on the other side, uh, I've got a counterbore coming. I want to counterbore these holes, so that when uh, when this is down to its final dimension, just the dome parts of those screws stick up here. And then start. Then I've got to do the trigger guard. Everything else forms around the lock plate. In this area. Trigger guard go on trigger. I've got a trigger. I forged out a, an end on it and cut it away. So now I've got to trim it all down and curl this back on itself and I can make 
a one inch trigger. It's probably going two pieces because I want it back to here and the sear is up here so probably have to come up like that. Use a long 3 8 inch drill to drill that ramrod hole back 16 and a half inches from the end of the barrel. So it'll end somewhere ahead. I want the tang screw to come in right in here. It'll end just ahead of the tang screw. I'm taking this not quite up to this half inch line yet. And I'm taking it almost down to my reference line, not quite. Move about a sixteenth of an inch. So that I can take this lock panel down. I'm going to redraw my center line from my reference line there to the line on the butt plate. Now I'll work these surfaces up to that center line, leave that center ridge. I'm not taking it down too far right now. I'm making a cardboard pattern for my lock panels that I'll be shaping to. I drilled a hole in the cardboard for the two end screws to position it with and then I just, I'm using different size washers to mark around it because the most of around here I want this is about 3 16 between an eighth and a quarter around the top and a little more on the ends so I use a bigger washer for that and I'll kind of blend these together and uh, straighten out some of the lines I'll run a straight line across here across here across here then the bottom I'll just shape to the lock itself leaving about an eighth of an inch on the bottom and I'll gradually swoop those the, the areas into this raised lock panel That should work. Marked on the forestock where the barrel lugs will be and in the center of that I've drawn a line here and now I'm, I'm going to measure down here where I want that pin to come through a little bit above center sometimes they wander a little if it hits this part it'll go on through but if it I don't want it to go off of it on this end <laughs> so that's why I want to pin through and I'm going to put this back in the stock. It'll be clamped in place. 
and we'll locate. And it comes out to nine hundred thousandths. Measure down from there. Just put a little mark. I'll put a pencil mark there, and then what I'm going to do is clamp it on, clamp the, the lock part that's still flat 90 degrees onto the table, the drill press, and swing it away till I can line up a drill, 16th inch drill with these marks. And sometimes they wander. I've had them wander in the drill press, but if this is clamped solid. And I let the drill mark its own hole, I think it'll go through pretty straight. Okay, the toll plate. That's going to sit down in here. I got a line mark from an eighth of an inch below the surface here. That's sixteenth of the thickness of this and a sixteenth of wood to finish. And then down back here, I'm going to go just a sixteenth below the edge of the butt plate here. And it's a little bit long, so I'll file it on the angle until it fits right in there, and then all this will be rounded over. And then this down here will go down into the wood, 16th below the surface, 16th inch line, and uh, then the wood will be finished level with it, except this edge, the stock will finish down to this edge, and the edge of the butt plate. This is slightly below that edge there. This is just about a sixteenth below that edge there. And it's a slight hollow in the middle, not perfectly straight. So now I can inlet this into the stock and then I'll trim this back here so it sits down against the butt plate here. And this is centered on the butt plate here, and this is centered on my center line. So before I set that in there, I have to file my inletting draft, which is just angled down, angled in slightly on this edge. So it's a goes it goes in as a wedge, in a wedge shaped mortise, and it gets tight at the top. And then I'm gonna outline it. Cut in the outline and then just start chewing away wood with my small chisel till this goes down into the stock. This goes flat on here and this is below 16th below the surface. I'm drawing around it with a very sharp pencil and uh, I'm going to start cutting in, staying just inside the lines. Outline it with my knife. Take taking out the wood between the lines. Watch my grain. Let's go slow and take a little bit at a time.
I get a layer of wood out of there, I can use the black stuff. I'm working my way down. I'm almost there. It's going down below the surface. When I'm down all the way back here, that'll be the right depth. 
getting kind of snug in there. When it starts getting real black, it's hard to see. She's getting tight on the edges. It's hard to see the black with the new black. So what I do when we can do that is on the edges here, put a lot of black on the edges and the shiny spots are where it's bearing. So I'm going to go in and just scrape those a little bit and trim those where the shiny spots are so she's not so tight. If it gets too tight, it can actually lift pieces of grain up, and I don't want to do that, so I'll just be going in there with whatever scrapers I can get in there, watching my grain. I've got this little, mostly I use these tools. She ground this out of a speed bore bit. Okay, right in here. Probably have to trim that out a little bit. I just use whatever tools I need to use. A little small gouge here. It's really good for doing these curved sections. A little bit of time. Don't try to take too much at once. Whatever you got to do to relieve those areas. In there with this knife, a little. A little bit at a time is the name of the game here if you want a nice sharp inlet. And she's got to go down a little bit more, so some black marks here. I can use my scraper soon. Much in my grain. I'm getting close. Not too long now. Not told plate fully and let it know. Down below the surface. Up my sixteenth. Put three brass screws in it. I've got three number four three quarter inch long screws up here. I this little tiny screw that I had, I think it's a two or a three, about a half inch long. I've got this all rounded off. If I cut this off and file it down flush with the stock here so the butt plate sits on it and I rounded this off here and when I take the stock down I'll take the brass here and the butt plate down at the same time and I take it down to the final line. Now I'm going to install my ramrod pipe. I've got it marked here where that barrel lug is going to be. I, want it, I don't want it to hit that so I'm going to mark it back just a little bit from that barrel lug. And I'm going to inlet it into the ramrod groove. And about there. I'm not going to put one back here because this is such a short ramrod channel. I kind of like just the primitive style hole in the stock. There's going to be enough brass down here with the toe plate and the trigger guard, so I think all I only need is this one pipe right there.
I go through to the barrel groove, it really doesn't matter. Because the barrel will cover it up and it's going to take most of that web anyway. I made this little chisel out of a 1 8 drill, sharpened down to a sharp edge that I used to cut up for these rings. I've got a notch filed in here so I know always know which way it goes forward. These uh, four metal ones are pretty symmetrical. Sometimes the cast ones aren't. Also I put a little mark by each one of these high bands with the marking pen so once, it's, once I get a little groove there it settles right into where it's going to go. And then it's just a matter of keeping the tools sharp and going trimming out the black stuff, which is what inletting is all about. Little shavings. As long as you're making chips, you're making progress. So I think I've reached good point to stop if I'm going to measure and pin it through the web just like I did with the barrel lugs. I was able to drill the rear barrel mounting pin hole in the drill press but these I couldn't, no good way to clamp it because these are too far away from the drill press table so I'm going to drill these front ones the old way by hand. Just gonna go through wood and lug. So that's pretty good. None of them are too near the edge. So that should uh, pin that barrel and the ramrod pipe onto the stock. Next will be the trigger guard. 
have this beautiful trigger guard. It's uh, for a German Jaeger rifle. It's a German hunting rifle that went all the way back into the Wheelock era. And uh, where this, my tang bolt, I want my tang bolt to go through. I've got this nice rounded area here, so I want my tang bolt to go right through the middle of that. Be perpendicular to that. I want it to come out. Right up in there, in the tang. This is how far the ramrod comes back. This is the back of the tang. I want it back, not too far back, but sort of far back. And I might even drill the ramrod hole longer once this is in. So I know the area that I want this part to set. Mark it right there. And the trigger is going to come through back here. So that's where it's going to set. But you see the problem. If I try to bend this to fit this stock, even with it annealed, this cast brass is going to break. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> so the way that I've devised to get past that is I have a piece of one inch by one eighth inch steel here. Just mild steel, but it's a little springy. I've got it bent to conform to the stock. I've got it marked here where I want that area to go. So what I'm going to do is clamp this and also that this, this doesn't fit the stock exactly there but this does so I'll clamp this under here initially. Put this in the vise and start warming this up with the propane torch. And uh, I'll do it on the garage with the lights off, the door partly shut so that I can pin and I'll warm the whole thing up, I'll heat the whole thing up until it just starts. Barely can see a dull red. And I'm going to start first of it just with the weight of it, see if it comes down any. But if it doesn't, what I'll do, I'll heat it up to the dull red and let it cool. And then I'll put a clamp on back here and just pull it down just a little tension on it. Because this will spring too. Too much tension will break this brass. I don't want to do that. Just put a slight bit of tension on it. Heat it up again. Let it cool. Take it up a little more. Each time we'll take it up a little more. And you can feel, even on a clamp, you can feel when it's, yeah, that's trying to bend it. So I'll bend it just a little, but then warm it back up to that dull red. And I'll keep doing that till this settles down against here. And then I'll try it on here. And if it needs to go a little more, I'll bend this a little more and I'll keep doing that until this settles down to fit onto that stock. And uh, I believe that will work. I did it with one other trigger guard and it did work so I have high hopes for this because I really like this trigger guard and I don't want to break it. I'm ready to try this. Now I have this under barely a little tension. A little bit of bending on the guard and a little bit on the metal. So I'm going to warm this whole thing up and I'll turn the light out. If this clamp falls off, that's good because it doesn't mean this is taking its bend. And then when it cools down, I'll put it back on and I'll do just a little bit more and we'll see how it goes. So, lights out. I don't know how well this will show up. I'm looking for just a dull red. This area until it comes down close. So I want the bend to be up here, really up in here. And this has to bend. So.
And we get the very dullest of red. Yeah, it's gonna fall off. There we go. All right, she's doing it. When that cools down, I'll put the clamp back on, take it down a little more. When this gets down to the metal, I'll clamp it down tight, put a piece of steel over it, and just keep doing that until she conforms to that piece of metal there. Then I'll see how close I am on the stock. We got it clamped down solid back there now. She pulled right down real nice. I'm heating the whole thing just to relieve all the stresses in it. This annealed it. Not over a dull red, just a dull red. She can barely detect a dull red. Alright, when that cools completely down. I'll unclamp it and I'll try it on the stock. If it needs to go any more, I'll bend this piece of metal whichever way it needs to go, clamp it back up and heat it back up. And that works. Without breaking it. Well, that's a nice fit. I like that. That's ready to inlet. I just have to file my inlitting draft on the sides. That's ready to go into the stock. I'm going to trace around this with my knife and uh, I'll, I'll deepen them, I'll go around them and deepen them with the guard off and, and just start taking out the, the wood in between until I get it down below the surface a little bit and I'll start doing the usual thing with the black stuff. I really like this trigger guard, but all this stuff is <laughs> makes it that much harder to end that, but it sure looks nice when it's done. So just have to do it. Some of these places I'll use my exacto knife after I change the blade and <laughs> this one tips broke off. They cut a fine line, but boy, they're brittle when the tips break off. I just resharpen them a lot. This one's been resharpened enough times.
So I had to turn it around, keep from digging in. You have to cut whichever way it digs in the least. And with this wavy changing grain, you're not really sure what that is. If you start digging in too much, I back off, turn around, try the other way. Thank you. 